Hey friends, so glad that you could join me for another episode of the She's Making an Impact podcast. Today, we are continuing our SOS In Need of Rescue series, the Lifeguard series. And if you haven't listened to the earlier ones in this series, I'll be sure to link them in the show notes so you can go back and check them out. So our topic for today is one of my absolute favorite topics because it is completely life-changing. Today, we get to focus on the fact that Jesus saves us from sin. Colossians Colossians chapter 1 verses 13 and 14 from the ESV says this, He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So before we can talk about how Jesus saves us from sin, it's important for us to understand what sin is. Okay, so what is sin? So it carries with it the idea of missing the goal. So let's do a quick word study here. This is one of my favorite things to do. In Judges chapter 20, verse 16, it says this. Among all these were 700 chosen men who were left-handed. Everyone could sling a stone at a hair and not miss. Now, I like to use a Greek and Hebrew interlinear. What that means is because the Bible was not written in English, and I speak English, um, then you need to look at the original languages to see there's certain things that there's nuances. It's like, you know, sometimes it's a difference between like a black and white TV and a color TV. Like you can get the picture, but there's certain details that make things more vibrant um, when you understand the original languages. Now, sometimes the original language is like, oh, did that really what the English, is that really what the English says? Like, like I need to really study this. Um, And we have so many tools available to us now, which is so cool. So I like to use what we call a Hebrew or Greek interlinear, and you can Google that. Bible Hub is where I like to go. It's a way to see the original words that were used in a, a passage of scripture. And then you can see how it was translated. And then you can see all the other ways that that word was translated as well. It's truly fascinating. So the word, the root word that's translated miss in this verse comes from, um, in English, it was, we would say it like kata. Okay. Um, it's from the Strong's word number 2398. So what happens is there's a Strong's concordance which goes through every word that was used in the Bible and it has a number and you can look at that number and then you can see how else it was used. And so um, I'm putting both of those links in the show notes as well. So when you look up what 2398 says, that word sin, kata, miss, that's the same word. It's it's translated sin many times, um, multiple times throughout the throughout the Old Testament. So, and then hamartia is is the same idea in the Greek. Now, let's think about this a couple different ways. So, what does it mean to like miss the goal? So, I'm kind of a silly way, but I think this is what comes to my mind is our kids like to send me these text invitations to play what they it's a game pigeon on our phones. And um, one of the, we text back and forth, like we play a game and we take back, you know, back and forth turns. Um, One of them that we sometimes play is darts. Well, so sometimes when I send that dart to the target on my phone, um, not only does it not like reach the intended spot on the target, sometimes it doesn't reach the target at all. Like it doesn't even reach the whole dart board. Um, It just misses it completely. And I have a specific target that a specific goal that I'm reaching for and I miss it. That's that word sin. I know that sounds funny because we think of sin as a religious, only a religious term, but the thought behind it is missing something just like it said in judges that they could, they, they could sling a stone and not miss. They could sling a stone at a hair and not miss. Now that's really good target. Um, being able to to hit a target. Another target example that comes to my mind is our son used to be part of an air rifle team when we lived in Alabama. 
And one day when we were at the range, a gentleman in a wheelchair approached my husband and asked if my husband wanted to shoot. And, you know, it's kind of funny because like my husband's visually impaired, so he can't see the target. And here's, you know, someone coming out, coming up to him and saying, hey, do you want to shoot? Well, it turned out that this person who had approached him was involved in the Paralympic um, world shooting team. And they were in this like several year process of getting the visually impaired shooting um, as part of the Paralympic Games, uh, um, you know, like to officially make them part of it. And so the way that they would do that is by using audio tones. So it's my husband was able to put on a pair of headphones and actually listen to these audio tones to be able to tell when the gun that he was, you know, the air rifle that he was shooting or pistol, whatever it was that he had in his hand, that when he would get aimed at the target and then the tones would actually change, you know, be a higher pitch, um, the closer he would get to the, to the center of the target. Now, mind you, it's literally, you're like around 33 feet away and you're literally trying to hit something the size of a quarter, like, from that distance and you're blindfolded basically, you know, which my husband can't see it. So you were listening to these tones. Now, it was amazing to me how many times he could actually get the 10.9, like right in the center. It was, it was wild, like how he could actually do that. Um, in the example that I'm talking about, you know, whether it's the darts or whether it's my husband, you know, aiming at, you know, aiming with the air rifle, you know, we didn't hit the target every single time, like we would miss the goal, right? So how does this relate to sin in a spiritual context? So there's two types of sins, commission and omission. So sometimes we commit a sin. We actually do something that God has said, don't do, right? You can think of like lying or stealing, you know, murder, um, adultery, or, or something as simple, I say simple, but it's serious when you disobey, you know, someone in authority, children disobeying parents, or when someone disobeys, you know, a law that is put out, those are committing a sin. So those would be called sins of commission. But sometimes we omit something that God has told us to do, right? So we don't do something that God says we are to do. So we're told to love God with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, our strength, and we're supposed to love each other. We're told to do good. And when we fail to do the good things that God has told us to do, when we fail to do the good that God wants us to do and instructed us to do, that's sin. So those are sins of omission. So we have commission when we do something wrong and we have a mission when we don't do something good that we're something that we should do something right. So either way, it's sin. It's missing the intended goal. So let's go back to the story that we've been reading in previous um, previous podcasts in this series, where we're reading in Genesis chapter one through three. Remember that God's intentions for Adam and Eve, they were for good. They knew that God had given them every tree in the garden to eat from freely. Every tree. It was for good. Every tree except for one. And God was protecting them by telling them not to eat from that one tree. And then the serpent uses these lies mixed with truth as he talks to Eve. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, we read this. It says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some of it and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. At that moment, friend, at that moment, the dominion of darkness that we read about in Colossians 1 that we started with, at that moment, that is when darkness started to take over. So the dominion of darkness took place inside of them. They were under the rule of darkness, its authority. 
So what did God say that the consequences would be for them if they ate from this tree of knowledge of good and evil? God said that they would die. And remember what we said earlier in this series in John chapter 10, verse 10, it says the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So once Adam and Eve made this choice to walk away from the goodness of God and all of the good that God had created for them, and they chose to go against God, the damage was done. They couldn't take it back. Their spiritual eyes and their physical eyes now were going to see evil and everything that comes with it. They were going to experience all of the terrible consequences. I mean, Eve even experienced one son murdering another son. Like they were going to experience all of the terrible consequences. They realized at this point, like we have a problem. Their eyes were open. They got what they wanted. They wanted to know the difference between good and evil. Well, now they did. And when God came to visit them in the garden, they hid from him. And then when he asked them, so what happened? Like they made excuses and they blamed it on each other and on the serpent instead of taking responsibility because see, sin separates. It separated Adam and Eve from God. It separated Adam and Eve from each other. It separates us from God now. It separates us from each other. Ultimately, if our sin debt isn't paid for, we will be separated from God and from his love for eternity. The thief's goal was to steal from them, to kill them, and to destroy them. And he has the same goal against you and I. Once Adam and Eve chose to go against God, the kingdom of darkness was already at work in them. The darkness that was inside of them was too powerful for them, and they tried to fix the problem that they had. They covered themselves with the best thing that they could find. They sewed, li- they sewed fig leaves together to try to cover themselves. But what's the problem with leaves? Well, no matter how big they are, okay, no matter how big the fig leaf is, what is the problem? The problem is that leaves will last for a little while and then they'll dry out. They're temporary. But, but friend, God already had a plan to fix their sin problem. He had a permanent solution. Because God knew that there was nothing that they could do to fix the problem that they had created. His solution was Jesus. Jesus is the perfect one who saves us from sin. By going against God, Adam and Eve, and now all of the human race, we're all born under the authority of sin and ruled by the kingdom of darkness. Jesus came to redeem us and to buy us back with his own blood. See, you and I were sinners. We were born sinners and then we choose to sin. James 2.10 says, for whoever keeps the whole law and fails in one point is guilty of all of it. So you miss the mark one time. It's, it, you're out of the, if, if there's a circle and you're supposed to stay in the circle, you don't have to go out of the circle multiple times to go out of the circle. You only have to go out of the circle once. So whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point is guilty of the whole thing. Jesus never did that. He lived a perfect life. He never sinned. He came to this earth with the intention of doing something good for us. He came to this earth with the, with the intention of dying in our place to pay the debt that we owed because of sin, to redeem us back to God to transfer us back from the domain of darkness into his kingdom, the kingdom of light. Romans chapter three, verses 23 through 25 says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. Romans chapter six, verse 23 says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Romans five, verse eight says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Isn't that last verse one of the most beautiful things that you have ever heard? While we were still sinners, God demonstrated his love for us by Christ dying in our place. 
Here's what Jesus did. He didn't stay dead. He physically rose from the dead three days after he, he died. He physically and spiritually defeated death, sin, and the grave. And he offers us eternal life. It's available to everyone who believes by faith. It's offered to all, but only those who receive it will have eternal life. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 says this, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. So my question for you today, my friend, is this. Will you receive eternal life? Do you believe that sin has separated you from a holy God? Do you believe that Jesus died to pay for your sin? Do you believe that Jesus rose from the dead? Do you, by faith, trust that his sacrifice was and is enough to pay for your sin? If so, then talk with God and say something like this, God, I believe that my sin has separated me from you, but that Jesus died to pay for my sin. I believe he rose from the dead and by faith, I am trusting what Jesus did to save me and to give me eternal life. Thank you that I am now born into your family. Amen. If you made that decision, I would love to know. If you have more questions and you weren't ready to say, yes, I I believe today, reach out to me and ask me any questions that you have. It would be my pleasure to do my best to help answer your questions. Shoot me a text. It's one of the best ways to reach me. 865-309-4737. Let me know about your decision. So I would love to celebrate with you and encourage you in your faith. You have a fantastic week and know that you are deeply loved by the God of the universe who gave his own life for you.